Welcome to Business Resilience Decoded. I am your host, Vanessa Von Matthews, the Founder and Chief Resilience Officer of Asphalus Advisors. Today, I'm excited to have an accomplished guest lined up today to speak with us on technology leadership and data protection. So let's jump right in and introduce our guest, Jerome Wint with DCIG. He's the president and founder. Good morning, Jerome. Well, good morning, Vanessa. Thank you for having me today. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what city in the U.S. are you in? I'm in balmy Omaha, Nebraska. I think we're at a comfortable 35 degrees this morning as we're recording this. So, <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Can you tell our listeners more about you and share a little bit about your professional experience and specifically how you also got into being a business owner? Sure. So uh, again, well, again, thanks for having me, Vanessa. Appreciate being on your show. So yeah, so DCIG actually stands for uh, the D Data Center uh, Intelligence Group. So really what DCIG does is we are a, uh, we basically do competitive analysis between different companies and, and specifically different technologies and really help companies understand what the differences are between products and, and solutions they're evaluating. I mean, we, we don't really believe there's like a, a bad solution out there necessarily. We just think there's better solutions for, for different use cases. So we really try in our, our analysis and our coverage to articulate the differences so people can really understand the choice they're making and what the pros and cons are of each choice. And, and that's really very helpful for companies as they're evaluating technologies. What got me down this path is actually, I used to be a, uh, a data center engineer for uh, First Data, which is now Pfizer uh, back in uh, 15, 20 years ago, I used to work for them. And First Data was really, uh, you know, really had a really good process. And we were, at that time, we were kind of forward looking that it was, a, it was already a multi-vendor environment. So we got a lot of experience in looking at different technologies at the enterprise level. And they had a really great system for evaluating these different technologies and making really the best technology choice at the time. And really, and it really that empowered their business, uh, you know, the business side of the house to make, you know, really, you know, really get very competitive on their bids because they really weren't quote unquote locked into one vendor. So I took a lot of those principles in, in building DCIG's business to help companies and, you know, make more informed decisions about different technologies. So, and really that's how it got me. Uh, I kind of looked at different analyst firms, but I just always wanted to be my own business owner. And that's how I ended up, you know, basically going solo and been doing it now for almost 15 years. Awesome. Well, congratulations on 15 years in business. I am, uh, we're seven years in business. So uh, you've got double the road ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, That's there's been some good years and there's been some lean years. So I think, but I think any business owner goes through that. So, <laughs> Well, you, you kind of teed up my next question for you. So risks can be hazard and opportunity. And in some cases, the, the pandemic was detrimental to business owners. I know we all, you know, probably have our stories that we can share. And in some cases, COVID-19 has been very positive for business. Right. What has COVID-19's impact been on you and your company? Yeah, so when it first started happening in March, I was like, you know, my heart was just kind of sinking into my gut, okay? Because I, and I think most owners felt like that. Maybe some some still haven't had their heart come out of their gut yet because of where they're at. But, you know, I just saw everyone shutting down, clients who had previously committed they were going to do work with me. said, yeah, we need to hold off now. And, we, you know, because of all the uncertainty. So I'd say you know, March, April, May, it was like, uh, great. You know, <laughs> you know, here we go. It's going to be a horrible 2020. And then all of a sudden, like the first week of June, my phone started ringing. Okay. And you know, it's like, usually, you know, you know, four or five people call me, maybe one or two, you know, you know, you know, just sort of law percentages. Well, everyone suddenly wanted to do work with me. And I'm like, what's going on? And it turned out that uh, in my business, because we, you know, DCIG is basically founded as a virtual company. All our analysts work remotely. That this was now, the, this is now the new normal. So we were basically at the forefront of the new normal and companies suddenly realized they need digital content. We, we basically produce uh, uh, basically papers and reports, and we also participate in webinars and whatnot like this. But really, all of a sudden, there was this huge demand for digital content and companies' budgets that they had previously allocated to going to things like the DRJ show in the fall. Suddenly, they weren't traveling to those shows. They weren't you know setting up booths and all that. So suddenly, they had money for, for digital content, and they wanted to do more lead generation programs. And so anyway, that's that's really how they started contacting us. Hey, let's get in these competitive intelligence reports have been extremely successful for companies out in the field because they they find that they can you know it really helps people make decisions much more quickly they really you know either we're going to buy your solution or we're not i mean it just helps to make that so either they're helping move deals forward or they're, they're getting out of deals so it's it was just sort of like a sort of a perfect storm of events that you know you know i didn't anticipate this happening but it it, it, it certainly in our case played to our, our advantage where people were looking for digital content they were looking to help 
get content people have. And people actually, you know, now have actually time to read this sort of content as well because <clears throat> they're not, you know, not traveling and doing those sort of things. They're they're looking for some from stuff, some stuff too. So so overall, it's been a very positive impact on our business, even though it didn't look like that initially. So I think a key word that you said was was positioning. You know, if I think back to March, April timeframe, and even through the rest of 2020 this year. Um, we've learned a lot about the infrastructure of the small business environment in the United States and, right. and how many are not positioned well. Right. Um, and so I think it's, it's extremely important to, to have the business acumen, right, to kind of think through how do we structure our company to really be COVID proof <laughs> before right. we knew right. that that was even a thing. Yes. <laughs> Right, so right. Still be here, right? Yes, right. Yeah. So, like, one of the things like we've really learned this year, like, you know, we've seen just the, you know, for those companies, hard to like, we, you know, we've gone to like, you know, online workspaces. You know, they, there's like, there's a couple of them out there. Whether you're off, using Office 365 or Google Workspaces, those are probably the two most popular ones. I mean, we've been using this for years, but that's, you know, that's obviously our use of that has increased more. And then, you know, auxiliary services, whether it's like Zoom, like we're using here, or Teams and other ones. I, I, you know, it's just been really nice to see some really nice advancements in a lot of these interrelational media things even though i've been working from home really 15 years i've done more video calls in the last year than i've done in the previous 13 or 14 and you know the technology has been there but it just hasn't been as good i mean now it's like i feel like we can have a really good conversation you know i, I mean i've gotten better lighting in my office and yeah you know, it's just there's just a lot of things that have, have really improved here over the last or even the last six to eight months that just weren't there i'd say prior to march so it's, it's been really good i think for businesses in that respect who want to work virtually or we've been working virtually for a long time the it, it's much more accepted now to do business virtually. And you know, I think people are seeing a lot of benefits from it. Absolutely. So my CPA asked me today, how many miles are you driving in your car so we can get you a tax write off? And I said, well, 2020 or 2019? I said, <laughs> 2019, it was about 20,000 miles. And on the airplane, the other half, I said, but now we're not driving. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do a deduction on that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so point. funny. My wife was just telling me we just got our car insurance quote in like just yesterday and it's dropped by a thousand dollars year over year. And we're, you know, we didn't really change anything. So, you know, the number of, I, I'm guessing now is the number of miles of we've dropped is dropping up. There's a few other people driving as well. So probably the risks have gone down for the insurance companies as well. So I don't know if anyone, everyone else is saying that, but we were kind of, you know, we kind of opened our eyes say, man, can't believe our insurance dropped that much in one year. So, so look, so I know you, you, you really have a firm understanding of the, the, the space um, and technology and you're talking to leaders every day. What types of questions are, are technology leaders asking you? You know, the, the thing I hear over and over again is, you know, really about ransomware. I mean, it doesn't matter what size company I talk to. Uh, like, how do we protect ourselves against ransomware? Uh, because, you know, again, people ask me about technology questions and, and what do we do to protect ourselves? So I say that is like really the number one issue. And I, I don't care. I mean, I, I know of a hardware store, little mom and pop hardware store that got hit by ransomware just uh, in a town near us. And, you know, and then you hear about all the, you, know, you hear about all the big ones, but really no one is immune from this sort of stuff. So whatever, you know, if you're, so if you're a small business, you really need to be thinking along those lines. And, and I say, and from what I've seen, most of the research I've done, most of the ransomware, instant ransomware coming through your email. So you really need to be thinking about the impact that ransomware can have upon your business. And it really takes steps to protect yourself against it. And, and maybe the steps aren't hard, but if, but if you wait until after you're attacked by ransomware, you, I mean, I, you know, I just can't even tell you some of the horror stories I've heard. Maybe you've heard them as well. I mean, I mean, you read about you know, how much money people lost, but that's, that's really, you know, the money you know, that's lost is almost sort of the, the small issue or, you know, the money you have to pay to rent, you know, the ransomware, it's just all the business downtime, figuring out, you know, having to deal with basically criminals to pay money to them, to give them a key that may or may not work to recover your data. Uh, you know, it's just like, and like one company I knew, I spoke to them earlier this year. Uh, they actually, hit, you know, they even had backup and they had, they had stuff replicated to another side. I mean, they thought they had their themselves covered, except the ransomware got into the data, got into their backup data that then got replicated to the other site. And then both their primary and production site were all encrypted. And the hackers wanted the million dollars. And they said, even if they paid the million dollars, it still would have taken us, you know, months to recover because they had to decrypt everything and rebuild everything. And they didn't know if it was going to work. So I say all this not to scare people. I mean, I do say a little bit to scare people, but just, hey, listen, you need to take action on this stuff and make sure you're doing backups and make sure you're making secure backups. That, I mean, and that's really, I'd say that when I talk to business owners, that's the one thing I really try to emphasize as well. Then the other thing I'd say, I have a lot of conversations just around how best to use 
uh, the cloud. And I mean, there's, and that can mean a lot of different things, whether you're storing data in the cloud. I mean, I assume a lot of people may use things like, you know, like, like maybe Dropbox or, you know, for file sharing, but you know, whether, you know, Office 365 is another type of cloud, or maybe you're hosting applications in the cloud. Not only is there's, you know, there's different requirements for backup, but different types of backup you need in different ways you even have to perform backup, depending how you're storing data and where you're storing data in these different environments. So disaster recovery journal, and it's focused on, you know, business continuity and resiliency. It, it, the rules have really, you know, in some places, you know, in some ways they've kind of stayed the same as you in the cloud, but other places you really have to almost stop, stand back and think, okay, how am I storing data? And what is my responsibility for recovering this data in the cloud? A lot of these rules are changing depending on what type of cloud and how you're storing data in the cloud. Wow. So I heard ransomware and the cloud. Yes. Those are the top two those questions. Are, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. Those are, those are, you know, I can't think of a, uh, you know, there's, there's, I'd say there's another, you know, and, and uh, any other conversations I have are often related to those two topics, whether it's ransomware or the cloud, you know, there people are using the cloud in new ways and different ways and whatnot. But that's really what I, because of the, the individuals I deal with and the organizations I deal with, that's, that's really their, you know, sort of top of mind with them most of the time. Thank you for sharing that example, because, you know, I think for, for some folks, it might be a thought that, well, hey, once I pay them off, then I'm good. But to your point, you can go 90, 120 X number of days and still not have access to your data. And if you don't have right. your data, how are you going to run the business? Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it, I mean, all it does is advise you a key. Okay. I'll just imagine all your data is encrypted and all they do is give you a key to decrypt it. You know, they don't, they, I mean, it's not like they send along an instruction manual on how to save all your data. It's like, this is just how to decrypt it. Well, what if it doesn't work? Okay. Or what if it only partially works? I've read, I've heard stories that it only works on some of them. They use some of these different encryption keys. I mean, it's, it's like you hear about all these different stories of what's going on, or sometimes they delete all your data and then they encrypt, they delete some of it and they encrypt the other. What about all the stuff they deleted? I mean, these guys are, are nefarious. Okay. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, the people on this call and hopefully those listening, you know, don't think like that, but the other people do. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's not, it's, you just don't even want to enter that world if you can avoid it. And, and, and here's the good news. I mean, most people who are attacked, I mean, like the vast majority of people who are attacked by ransomware do recover. I mean, they're not paying the ransom. I mean, if they take the right steps, they prevent it. They, you know, have backups, they secure them. You know, they, they can recover. Okay. Are they, they're not even affected by, it. but those, that, that small percentage that is, it is, uh, it is just a gut wrenching experience for those, for those companies. Absolutely. Well, Jerome, you've been a wealth of knowledge today. Where can our listeners find you if they want to reach out to you? Sure. So uh, DCIG is, uh, you can either reach me at uh, jerome.went at dcig.com, or you can uh, come visit our website at dcig.com where, you know, easy to find and hopefully it'll come up when you type in our address. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Thanks for tuning in to Business Resilience Decoded with Disaster Recovery Journal and as Spallis Advisors. Subscribe, share, download, and look out for future episodes.